Today we're going to be removing, cleaning, and rebuilding the carburetor on this three-horse Yamaha outboard motor. The first thing we need to do is remove this faceplate. There's actually two bolts that hold it on, and before you take this off, you want to observe how this choke works. It actually is not attached, and once you undo these two bolts, this whole thing will pull off, but make sure you can observe how it goes together, you know, so that you can put it back together properly. Okay, right here you can kind of see how it works. There's one metal bar that goes up through the choke handle. And there's one metal peg that goes through this plastic armature. Watch how it goes back and forth. First, you'll take these two bolts out right here. Next, you have to pull out the rewind starter just a slight bit. There is a wire for the kill switch that's still attached, but the whole thing will fold around the side like this, giving you room to be able to get to your carburetor. You can actually wrap the rope around the gas cap to be able to hold this whole thing out of the way. You have to take this screw out right here that holds the wire for the carburetor butterfly valve. You want to make sure you get this back into the exact same position as far as where it's clamped down this cable. So you might even take a sharpie and maybe mark you know, the tip. And that way when you go to reassemble it, you'll be able to line it up right to the edge of that mark you made. The actual front of this cowling actually now can come off. There's actually a screw back here on both sides. And there's a couple other bolts up underneath here. And once you take those four off, this whole front cowling will actually come off and give you good access to the carburetor. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair? What's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life and all your life. Have you ever told a lie before? I have and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell, or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later, he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. By turning the motor around backwards, it actually gives you better clearance to be able to get to the two bolts that are up underneath here. There's a couple of clips right here on the side that have to be lifted up and removed. One on both sides. And with these two clips off, now this front piece can actually just pull right out of the way and you can get access to the carburetor. You also notice the two clips are actually a little bit different. The one that has the rubber tab on it came on the right side of the motor, which would be right next to the tiller arm. So you can take this gas line off. Make sure you turn the gas off on the side here. The thing is pushed all the way in. That is the off position. Before we take this carburetor off, we're going to go ahead and remove this fuel pump. You just take these four screws out. And then the whole pump just basically pulls right off. You want to inspect these flappers to make sure you don't see any garbage or anything that's sticking under those. This looks actually real clean. There's a little piece of crud right there. Take some carburetor spray cleaner and go ahead and just spray this thing down. It's also good to spray the back side of the flapper valve. So if there's anything stuck in the flapper valve, it'll just push it right back through. This looks all real good and clean. So we'll go ahead and reinstall it. You also want to inspect this rubber flapper right here. If there's any punctures in this, then the fuel pump will no longer function. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the carburetor on this thing. There's basically bolts on the front of the carburetor. By just taking these two off on the front of the air breather, the whole carburetor now will actually come off. Just like that. Next, we're going to go ahead and take the bowl off the bottom of this carburetor. There's basically just four screws on the bottom. Go ahead and take those out. And now the bowl will just separate off the bottom. You can see you have a float valve right here. Let's take a look at the bottom of the carburetor bowl. 
not too bad. This float valve goes up and down to regulate the amount of gas going through the motor. See our problem here because it doesn't appear the needle valve is dropping down whenever the float goes down. Next we'll go ahead and remove this needle valve and we'll see what appears to be sticking it. It's probably got a little bit of crud in it. We'll basically let's take out this one screw right here and that will release this rod that holds this float on here. Remove that screw. This rod basically pulls out of the way. For whatever reason, that needle valve is stuck. There, just, just popped it loose. There might be a little bit of crud in that brass needle valve cylinder there, so we'll get all that cleaned out, and hopefully that resolves our problem. We also have a carburetor needle valve adjustment here on the side. We're going to want to take this out to be able to blow some carburetor cleaner through there to clean out all the passageways. We're going to go and screw it in to see how many revolutions it takes to get it all the way to the bottom, and then we'll know how many turns to back it back out to reset it to the same setting. So let's go here. It's going to be one half, one, one and a half, two. So when we go to put this back in, then we'll know exactly where to set it at. Okay, there's what it looks like. So now we're going to take our carburetor cleaner and we're going to put it into these holes and blow them all out. I like putting a little piece of electrical tape on the carburetor cleaner because then when I insert it in there, I can actually make it where it seals up, you know, against that orifice hole. And now I can blast through there and it'll blow out somewhere inside this carburetor. You can see it blows out the back side of the carburetor here. Okay, let's go ahead and do the one for the gas input right there. Okay, that's clear. And then you also have another jet valve right here in the bottom. So we'll put this down in there. We'll go and push our electrical tape up in there. And this should blow out somewhere inside the carburetor also. You can see it right there inside the carburetor throat as it comes out. We'll also spray out the bottom of this carburetor bowl and get, we'll get this crud that's right down here in these crevices all cleaned out. In this particular situation, this little metal strap here that's supposed to pull the needle valve back down when the float goes down, it was actually not adjusted properly. You can actually see I actually bent those two little metal tabs down just a little bit so it's going to start pulling that needle valve down sooner as the float drops. You do not want to bend this copper tab right here because this is actually a, a gas level adjustment of how high the gas will go in the carburetor bowl. And you also want to inspect your needle valve to make sure there's no grooves or pits or anything on the tip of it right there. See that this plate right here stays on the motor. It's not necessary to take this off to get the carburetor off. These two bolts do not have to be messed with. And you also want to take a look inside there and take a look at the reed valves, see if anything is rusty or anything looks like it had damage on it, because that's certainly essential to make this carburetor work properly. Next we'll take out these two bolts that hold on the back side of the gas tank. And there's one more bolt here in the front that holds the front of the gas tank. Now with these three bolts out, the gas tank is free to lift up out of here. You have to make sure you're not catching down here on the gas valve. And now the whole thing will pull out so you can clean the tank and clean this valve out. There's actually a filter that's built into the bottom of the tank. And if you take a pair of pliers, you can actually pull it out of the tank to inspect it. There it is right there. And you can see here how this valve is all one piece where it just pulls up through the cowling. When you pull the tank out, make note that there's a metal spacer, so this could fall out of here. Hey, as far as the internal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you were real and you were out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it, and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real, and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.